Hi students, let's learn a concept before we do a sum. The concept which you are learning is triangles between the same two parallel lines. Let's understand, it's very simple. For this, let's consider two lines here, line L and line M. And I'm saying here that these two lines, L and M are parallel. So we have two parallel lines, L and M. Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to consider a triangle ABC and place it between these two parallel lines. Now, when I say place it between these two parallel lines means the vertices should be lying on both the parallel lines. One vertex is on one and the other two should be on the other. This is what we understand. So lying between the same two parallel lines. Now further, let's say for this triangle ABC, we are taking BC as a base. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is observe. Now I'm going to get one more triangle. Consider one more triangle with the same base BC and place it between the same two parallel lines. That means for that triangle, the base has to be BC and between the same parallel lines. Now, that means it is such a triangle here. So we have that triangle to be triangle PBC. So now let us find the areas of these two triangles. Okay, observe. So that means, now we know that when we talk about area of a triangle, what is the formula for area of a triangle? We know that it is half into base into height. So we write that, it is half into base into height. I want area of triangle ABC. For triangle ABC, if you see, we have got the base as BC, so we need to have a height from A. So we drop that perpendicular from A, that is AM. So now if I ask you what is area of triangle ABC, you will say area of triangle ABC is nothing but it is half into BC into that height, that is nothing but AM and mark it as statement number one. Let's say we want the area of triangle PBC now. So BC is the base, so obviously the height has to be dropped from its opposite vertex, that is P. So from P we drop a perpendicular on that end, right, line M. So now we can say that area of triangle PBC is nothing but it is half into base that is BC into height which is PN and that's your statement number two. Now if we look at statement number one and statement number two on the right hand side, half remains as it is same into BC, here also it is BC in the second statement. What is different? That is AM and PN, the heights. Observe AM and PN in the figure and tell me what can you say about the length of AM and PN? You know what? They are equal. Why? Because they are perpendiculars drawn between the same two parallel lines. They are always going to be equal, right? Beautiful. So that means now we know AM is equal to PN. That means the right hand side of statement number one and two are equal. That means the left hand side has to be equal. Hence now we can say that area of triangle ABC is equal to area of triangle PBC. We got it from one and two. That means from this we got a conclusion. We got the areas of these two triangles equal. Why? Because they are lying between the same two parallel lines and they have the same base. So that means now we can generalize the statement and write that triangles having or lying between the same two parallel lines and having the same base have equal areas. That is what we have learned, right? So lying between the same parallel lines and having the same base, they have equal areas. Let's move ahead and let's do a sum based on this, right? And it's from Hotz and it's the sum number 39. It says, there's a figure given to us and in that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram that is given and they say any line through A cuts DC at point P, any segment BC produced at point Q. So that is what the figure is already given to us. Now what they say is we need to prove that area of triangle BCP, observe area of that triangle BCP should be equal to area of triangle DPQ. Observe, let's focus on the left hand side, triangle BCP. If you look at the triangle BCP, it is lying between the two parallel lines, AB and DC. Do you agree AB and DC are parallel? Because they are opposite sides of a parallelogram. That means they are lying between two parallel lines. Okay, and observe, PC is the base for this particular triangle. Let's consider, because between the two parallel lines, we are taking the base as a side on that parallel line. So, we consider PC to be the base. Now, let us create a triangle with PC as a base and lying between the same two parallel lines. So if you have to create, how can we create it? How can we create such a triangle now? Yes, we can create by a construction, by drawing segment AC. So when I draw the segment AC, now we have a triangle APC and triangle BPC, both having the same base PC and lying between the same two parallel lines. Do you agree with this? Yes. So that means now we can say that areas of these two triangles are equal. So let's write it down now. So we know that segment AB is parallel to segment DC because it's opposite sides of a parallelogram. So now we can say that triangle APC and triangle BPC, they lie between the same two parallel lines, AB and DC. 
and also they have a common base PC. Therefore, area of triangle APC is equal to area of triangle BPC. This is what we got. Wasn't this easy, right? And let's mark it as statement number one, right? And it is because of the property which we learned. Triangles having the same base and between the same two parallel lines have equal areas. So now BCP, something we want about this. Observe now. But when you look at, it is equal to area of triangle APC. But when you look at triangle APC, now that triangle APC is a part of triangle ADC. Agreed? Observe now. That means we can say that area of triangle ADC is nothing but it is area of triangle ADP plus area of triangle APC. It is the sum of the areas of these two triangles. And we can write the reason for that as area addition property. And let's say we know that that area of triangle APC which we got, it is already shown in statement number one that they are e that is equal to area of triangle BCP. So let us replace that area of triangle APC by area of triangle BCP. So we replace it. So now the next statement would be, we we'll get area of triangle ADC is equal to area of triangle ADP plus replace it and we get it as area of triangle BCP. Beautiful. And this is your statement number two. The reason we'll write there from one. Is this much clear? Now this is what we got now. So somehow we have thought about that triangle, area of triangle BCP. Now we need to look on the right hand side. On the right hand side, we have area of triangle DPQ. Now we need to think about that and get that into the sum. How do we get that? Observe that triangle DPQ is nothing but it's a part of triangle ADQ. So that means now we can say that that area of triangle ADQ is equal to area of triangle ADP plus area of triangle DPQ. So we write that it is equal to area of triangle ADP plus area of triangle DPQ. The reason again this for this is nothing but it is area addition property. And let's say this is our statement number three. Now students I want you to focus on statement number two and statement number three carefully. That in the two proof we want area of triangle BCP and area of triangle DPQ. Both the things are present in statement number two and three. If you look at these two statements carefully, area of triangle ADP and area of triangle ADP in both the statements are same. And what we want is, we want area of triangle BCP equal to area of triangle DPQ. Now when you observe these two statements, if you want this to be equal, right, and already the part which is there with this on the right hand side, it is equal. Only thing is if we can get the left hand side equal, you're going to get it. The left hand side equal, that means we want area of triangle ADC equal to area of triangle ADQ. If we can obtain that, we are going to get them equal. So that means we are, our focus now is shifted to triangle ADC and triangle ADQ. Now observe, observe these two triangles. When you look at this triangle, that is triangle ADC which we have here, the figure and triangle ADQ, they both lie between the same two parallel lines AD and BQ because they are opposite sides of a parallelogram. And also they have the same base AD. That means again their areas are equal, beautiful. That means we can write area of triangle ADC is equal to area of triangle ADQ. And that is what we got and that is nothing but your statement number four. Right, so now when we compare, when we see all the statements, statement number two, three and four, now we can say that hence area of triangle BCP is equal to area of triangle DPQ. And this is what we wanted. And the reason for this we would write is nothing but it is from two, three and four. That's the sum, a very important sum, but a very simple one, easy, right? Which can come in the examination for four marks.